Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at the brand new Exceed Designs of Air. I have you say it. I first discovered Exceed Designs when I was doing an Amazon Knife of the Month pick a long, long time ago. And they had their first version of the Exceed Designs Tyrant Razor. This is V3 now. They perfected it over the years, over the years. And that's something I love when a company takes a design and tries to make it as perfect as they can by making new versions of it. And this is the V3 and it's a very, very nice EDC utility knife. You have mill tie scales, square pivot, deep carry tie pocket clip, very, very smooth action. And that's what kind of wowed me when I first picked up the V1, I flipped it and I was in amazement on how smooth this utility knife was. Same form factor, but I mean, stupid smooth. And uh, a few other people that I know picked one up and they, they felt the same way. So when I saw the V2 came out, I bought that one. And then when the V3 came out, they sent me this one. Also, they sent the Tyrant Razor M. I like this a lot. Just listen to this. It's got a haptic sound to it because of these magnets right here. And it also has little notches where this slides into place. So you just push that out and slide it, make a quick cut. This this one stays in my EDC pouch. It's super lightweight tie. Got a tie pocket clip, a little flat head right there. I was very excited when they announced that they were releasing a folding knife. And this is something that they had in R&D for, I think, two or three years, they said. And today we're going to take a closer look at the brand new Avair. The way this one's set up right here, without the milling, black with the skiff bearings, mine will cost $214. They sent this to me for review just to let y'all know that. The cheapest one of these you can get is $199. I'll leave a link to this knife down below if you do decide to pick one of these up. Make sure to check the lead time because it tells you how far back they are, how long it should take you to get your knife. They're pretty upfront about everything. So let's take a close look at this. I call it a mid-size EDC knife, maybe a medium size. It's coming in at 7.35 inches long with a 3.25 inch Tanto blade of Bowler M390 stainless steel. But it doesn't have your secondary point. It's just uh, like a deep belly. It's almost like a drop point. Mine's all blacked out. This is all they had at the time. For some reason, this knife kind of reminds me of the Quiet Carry Large IQ. Just that form factor and how slim and sleek the knife is. They do have jimping up top here. It's just a small row of jimping. I'd call it medium traction. It's not super grippy, but not something I really care about on my folders. You have a top swedge and you have a very stout tip there. So if you need to do some piercing, poking, prod, and you can definitely do that. You have a high flat grind, and it actually comes down to around 14 to 15 thousandths in this portion right here. I was super excited whenever I took that measurement, and I could kind of feel it. But the only thing that I was kind of bummed to see is this came with a 25 degrees per side edge bevel. That's a very, very thick edge bevel. And if I had to guess, it's because they were blending this edge in with the thicker Tanto tip. So it didn't look super wonky. But after I finished all the testing up, I decided to sharpen this up and drop that angle down. And another thing I noticed when I did that is you can see where I hit the plunge grind when I'm sharpening. So hopefully in the next iteration, they can increase the sharpening toil, go up with it some. That way you wouldn't hit that. Now I went, I dropped it from 25 degrees per side. Now it's at 21. I just didn't feel like sharpening anymore. And that's how big the edge bevel is. So nothing crazy. And I, I did some testing after I finished the testing just to see how, if it sliced a lot better and it definitely did. Now the testing you're about to see is done before I actually did the sharpening. So let's check that out. My knife came with a great edge out of box and so far so good. It's slicing well. It's going to excel at in hand cuts because you have a good bit of straight edge to work with. And I think the geometry on this one uh, is fairly thin. Um, I don't know about the edge bevel, but I will probably check that before we actually do the review. And uh, all light duty stuff like this, the thinner scales are going to be just fine. It was nice and comfortable, obviously, because I have gloves on. But yeah, so far so good. Um, it's slicing actually fairly well. <laughs> we'll see how it does in the uh, testing the ergos here. And you can see that edge 
it is wanting to peel the wood very easily. I'm using very light pressure here. I'm trying to see if there's any hot spots in the handle and I want to see how bad that thinner handle is going to want to spin in my hand. So I slowly increase that pressure more and more and more. While I was having to squeeze the handle very tight, it's doable and I had absolutely no hot spots. It was a very, very comfortable handle besides the fatiguing in my wrist and my forearms from the squeezing hard. Now, move over to the half inch sisal rope and <clears throat> the edge has a good, decent bit of bite to it. I'm trying to use that tanto portion just because it makes it easy to cut this on a flat cutting surface. Um, I, I will say though, being that the tanto area is a lot thicker behind the edge, it's not as easy to make these cuts. It's not you know hard or anything i'm trying to kind of now i'm trying to kind of stay where it transitions from that thick portion into the straight edge portion where you usually see like you know the two grinds intersecting but this one has no actual secondary tip to it so uh just trying to see what works best and um of course you know if that tanto area is thin or it's sharp it is easy to do that because it's very easy to uh, just put downward force into the rope. But I'd say it, it performed well. I cannot remember exactly how many I cut, but I think I put it on the screen here in a minute. Uh, I know I wasn't unsatisfied or anything. And uh, as far as the pinch grip goes, the thinness and the scales didn't bother me as much doing this type of stuff. And I'm having to put a good bit of force, you know, that's just how it is when you cut the fibrous sisal rope. Never something I love doing. <clears throat> but, yeah, the edge held up. It held up well. And we'll see how it does when we get to the rest of the testing. But so far, so good. Tantos aren't really my favorite knives to use. But, you know, this one, not so, oh yeah, 130 cuts. Not bad at all. And that is one thing about that transition point. It, it's, it slices very, very well. You could use that on a flat cutting surface or you can use that uh, belly portion. It's going through all the material fairly well. I did notice a little bit of drag in this dense corner cardboard. It could be for two reasons. I don't know what the edge bevels set at and that that coating could be causing a little bit of drag but here i still have a good bit of bite to that edge and i, I enjoy the way this one performed i thought it did really well and uh yeah let me know what y'all think let's see what the factory edge is like after the testing not bad try a slow slow cut Yeah, it's definitely not as sharp as it was when it started, but I'll sharpen it up after this video. All right, let's check out that action and deployment real quick. You have a flipper-only deployment. Love how that blade buries into the handle. You don't have any jimping, but I had absolutely no problem slipping off of that flipper tab. It probably wouldn't hurt to put some jimping there, but I'll tell you what. My particular one has the skiff bearings in it from them. You can add skiff bearings if you'd like, and this thing rockets out it's got a very well-tuned detent and drop shut action now it wasn't super drop shut when i first got it but it's breaking in more and more and more every time i carry it and use it very very smooth gliding action nice break on that detent this one comes out nice and fast let's take a look at the handle and i like this handle a lot even though it's thin and in the thickness department it's pretty darn thin if you're going to be cutting a lot of stuff and doing a lot of hard cutting that could fatigue your wrist and forearms quicker but with this type of knife this is just an everyday edc to make a cut put it in your pocket and go about your business so you have beautiful contour titanium scales and it's just a subtle contour nice beveling going all the way around it no sharp spots where you don't want them to be check this pivot out so they have an interesting looking pivot design. And when I say I'm closing my eyes right now, I cannot tell you where that pivot is because it is absolutely flush and it goes into the contour. So they must have had those on there while they were doing the machining of this. That's the only way I can think of. 
The ties black PVD coated. Now it says on the site DLC slash PVD. So I'm guessing the scales are PVD and the blade might be DLC. I'm not sure. But they kind of seem like they're the same finish. So I don't know. And check out your one body screw. The little square screw right there. Once again, I'm closing my eyes. I cannot feel where that's at. I have the Smooth Titanium. I'll pop up on the screen now. You can get it non-coated and you can get it with micro milling on the tie scales. That looks absolutely stunning and it'll probably give you a lot better grip. Then they have the integrated backspacer that houses this deep carry pocket clip. It's a milled tie clip, as you can see, and all you have to do is flip it over to the other side so it is reversible. It functions great. It's got some pretty tight tension on it, but there's no milling on this one. So it goes in and out of the pocket pretty darn nicely. And something that they did that I really, really wish more companies would do, they put the lock relief cut on the inside. So you don't have to worry about it getting in the way of that pocket clip. You have a Torx T8 for the pivot. And unfortunately, all the rest of the screws are Torx T6. I would love to see on the next iteration of these, all of them T8. T6 just have a tendency of stripping out a lot easier. And it's nice to not have to swap your drivers. It makes it a lot easier. This one, it doesn't really matter as much because you don't have to take that pocket clip off unless you're swapping it for lefty. But it would be nice to have this screw a T8. Blade centering is perfection right down the pipe. We have a hardened stainless steel lock insert right there. Also has an over travel in there so you don't overspring your lock bar. Pretty good blade to handle ratio. It comes all the way to the back of that backspacer. They have tons of internal milling to reduce weight as much as possible on the top and bottom. And they have the exceeds design co right there on the inside. That's really neat. This thing is super light in the pocket. It's only coming at 85 grams or 2.99 ounces. So let's round it up to three ounces. Outstanding. My lockup is sitting at around, I'd say 40, maybe 50% or so. Access to the lock bar is good because this comes down lower. So you can easily get your finger in there, no problem. Nice solid engagement every time. No up and down, no side to side whatsoever. Nice and tight lockup. Size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1 and 2, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, Hogue Ritter RSK and Mini RSK, and last is very similar in size to the Kaiser Original XL and the CJR B Pyrite. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. These are mainly just nitpicks. It would have been better to use fine cut jimping. It would have been a lot more grippier and maybe extended out further. Just so if you choked up a little bit, you still have something. Not a big deal to me. I don't really care too much about jimping. Do think opening this sharpening choil would help out a lot. So if I wanted to drop the angle like I did, I wouldn't be hitting that plunge grind. Uh, something I could probably, let's see, I could probably do that myself. Yeah, because it has an internal stop pin, so that's an easy fix right there. Also, I think the, the sharpened bevel, you know, 25 degrees per side is very thick for a folding knife. My favorite edge is either a 17 or 18 degrees per side edge. That's plenty strong enough unless the steel's super soft or way too hard. It's a perfect edge for almost everything. And if I want to get crazy, I'll go to about a 15 and under edge. So it still performed great with the edge it had. So it's not, you know, that big of a deal, especially being that it's fair, it's pretty darn thin. Even after I dropped that bevel from 25 to 21 degrees, I, I took that measurement behind the edge after the sharpening. So that 14,000 behind the edge is after that 21 degrees per side edge bevel. And lastly, maybe add some jimping to the flipper tab. And other than that, you know, I think they did a great job. One more thing, T8 construction everywhere would be great, or at least on this body screw as well. So whenever I maintain the knife, I only have to have one driver, not two. Not the end of the world, but it makes life a lot easier. And for their first design, I think they did an outstanding job. I really, really hope that they do more blade shapes, like a nice low tip drop point or sheep's foot blade would be pretty darn sweet, especially if they did one with a thumb stud. Oh, th this form factor with a thumb stud, maybe come down a little bit lower thumb stud, doesn't have to have a flipper on it. Oh man, I like this one a lot, but I would like that one even more. This one has outstanding action. It's just, this action is great. Great action, nice and lightweight, carries very, very good. It's so slim and sleek in the pocket. Yeah, 
at the $214 price point of this one, I think, especially for as small as a company as Exceed Designs is, I definitely think it's worth that price point. Let me know what y'all think down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.